Uh, hi everyone, welcome to the webinar this afternoon. Thank you so much for coming. Um, my name is Owen Brazier and uh, this with me is Penny, a co-presenter. Um, I'm a computing education specialist at the Australian Computing Academy, which I guess sounds like a mouthful. Um, we're a center at the University of Sydney, and I think we've got a couple of new people this um, this week. Um, basically, we've been running this series of um, an experiment just to do what we can to provide resources for you to help you out while you're um, all teaching remotely. Um, so we're a center at the University of Sydney, and we uh, write content for digital technologies. Um, and so it's mo mostly, mostly online content, which is uh, kind of ideal for teaching remotely, at least, at least we think. Um, and uh, my background is in electrical engineering, which and now I uh, work in education writing, educational content. So if you have any questions about uh, anything to do with electronics or programming, then please uh, type in the chat. And with me is Penny. Do you want to introduce yourself, Penny? Yeah, so Owen's pretty much covered what the Australian Computing Academy is. I'm a project officer, which means that I write uh, programming courses online and deliver professional development courses like this sometimes. Used to be in person, but now I get to talk to a screen. Um, very exciting. <laughs> Hopefully people behind it. And um, my background's in mechatronics engineering, which is like electrical, but better because you get play with more hardware. <laughs> yeah. Penny likes to think she's better, but um, she's got to remember who her boss is. So. Um, okay, continue on, Penny. We've got two primaries and one secondary. Thank you very much uh, for coming. Uh, we did have about 20 registrations, but it turns out I think they were uh, actually trying to buy Hamilton tickets instead. Um, so continue, Penny. Um, uh, yeah. One clicking on the right, right screen. <laughs> that was professional. Um, so we're going to be um, we're going to be using the uh, the first part of this webinar. Um, we'll be talking about the microbit. Uh, just type in the chat if you've used the microbit in school or not. Give us a yes or no. Yes, Jason. No for Kath. And what about you, Andrew? Um, only the emulations on Grockle. I helped write the emulator, so that's good to know. Um, cool. Um, okay, so well, that's 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 enough. Um, so we'll be um, looking at the uh, micro bit because you haven't used it, Kath. Um, it's a very good board to do introductory level um, physical um, programming, and so you can interact with the physical device, and it's much easier to program and and you can interact with the real world. And so it's a great way to uh, introduce um, digital technologies to, to students. Okay, continue Penny. Um, so there's a couple of ways that you can program the micro bit. Um, so block-based, which is our primary um, students that does visual programming up to year six. Um, can use either make code or um, on Grok Learning. They've got a Blockly implementation, um, which has that emulator. And uh, in secondary, in text-based, uh, we strongly recommend um, MicroPython and the little logo down the bottom is the Mu editor. And if you're interested, I can give you a bit of a demo of what that looks like um, at the end of the, of the webinar. All right. Um, so this is what make code looks like. And we do have courses that are a bit more structured in the Grok Learning platform, um, but we're going to be using Make Code just because. Well, I'll be honest, the emulator, even though I helped write the Grok one, the emulator is a little bit better. Um, they have a team of Microsoft developers, and we have me and Jim, and Jim is not around anymore. Um, so, um, and so it's a great way to get your kids um, quickly. Um, able to produce something that works, and they can test it in the in the web browser. And we'll do a bunch of demonstrations of that um, as we go. Um, and Penny's going to talk through the coding demonstrations, and I think that's what we're going to do now. Yeah. So well, I'll, I'll talk about what the plan is first. Then we'll then we'll go through the what the um, go straight to the demo. And we're going to build a project, which is going to be a little radio project. 
And then we're going to take what that project is by sort of doing it with you all. And then we'll map that project to the curriculum and see exactly what uh, elements of the curriculum it maps to. And then we'll provide suggestions of what other activities you could tack on to the project in your classrooms um, in order to get a broader coverage. Um, for right now, um, it may be a bit more applicable to do some of those activities um, in person. Um, I'll be, I will be honest, but I uh, will show you a bit of a demo of how you can use the platform to um, do a more structured course and just monitor their progress remotely. All right, Penny, let's, uh, let's, how about you tell everyone what make code is? Yeah, so we're just going to jump straight into it rather yeah. than uh, tell too much. So I'm going to get rid of all this code that's already here. Actually, we're going back to home. So you go into make code, it looks something like this. You have a list of all the projects that you've done before. You just generally click new project, give it a name. Do you have any called final, final projects in there? Uh, definitely, you can see final <laughs> right there. It's a very, very informative L L L R R R D R R S, which I promise means something. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. All right. Um, you should feel lots of confidence with Penny being a teacher. <laughs> so I aim is confidence for everyone else. <laughs> so it looks something like this. You've got the emulated micro bit on your left and the coding area in the space on the right and all of your programming blocks here. So we've got on start and forever. Um, on start lets you run programs on start only and forever lets you run programs forever. <laughs> Why are they paying you the big bucks? So the easiest to use thing is show LEDs and you just drag your mouse across it, draw whatever you like. Uh, I drew some more lines. That's and your penny is obviously an artist in training. Yeah, we're going to go with a, a kind of blocky smiley face. Yeah. After a while, you can see it appears on our micro bit on the left. So that's a that's a good first program. We can do better. We can make the really, it do lots of things. So this is show icon, gives you a drop down, lets you pick from what artists have created. So we can have a slightly smoother smiley face just here, and you'll see that once it loads, it switches between the two. Now it only does it once and then stops. So I'm going to put it in the forever one instead. And it'll just flicker between the two. He's uh, jumping, uh, jumping up and down, but his middle teeth is just staying put or something like that. Oh. And it's kind of like jumping and sticking a tongue out, I reckon. Oh, yeah. Um, and so if you do have any questions about this or if this is uh you understand this already um then please uh just type in the chat and we can uh, there are there are only three of you in attendance so we can um we can bow to your wishes whatever those wishes um may be and we can be, we can be ad agile i think is the word they use these days yeah. Flex flexible flexible <laughs> and agile <laughs> Um, so a beating heart's a good looking one. Uh, if you totally know this already or are finding it interesting, again, uh, let us know. So that's the basic menu. It's fun to explore. You have lots of different options. Uh, we also have show string, which so, rolls some text across yeah. the screen. And so if you wanted to do a welcome message and then go into the program that runs, how would you do that? Yeah, or well, people can type in the chat or Penny can answer. Um, Could answer, but if I've learned anything from teachers is you have to make people suffer for a little while before they get to respond. Um, <laughs> so when the um, code isn't involved, question timing. <laughs> it's what the real experts call it. Um, um, so when it's... Uh, when your blocks aren't part of the program, they're grayed out, as you can see here, and then we, we want to use them, we drag them inside blocks and they suddenly colour up again. So to have a program that runs just on start, in there, you can say, okay, Victoria, an exclamation mark, wait for the program to run. 
um, we'll get it scrolling across hopefully just once. Generally, short words work best. <laughs> and then the beating heart, which tells us how much we love Victoria. Um, so, yeah, so that's a bit of a demo. Um, I think because we've got the secondaries, we'll probably describe the demos in a bit more detail as we start to build the project together. What do you reckon, Penny? Would yeah, you, absolutely. You, is there anything else you wanted to show now? Yeah, let's show the button pressed and let's show the music just because students will find that eventually. Um, so we've got, you can press the buttons on the side, get it to respond. We can do, do gestures and get it to respond. So, um, so Andrew's asking, is this available on Mac OS or usable on iOS? So they do, it's both. Um, so. Grok actually has an implementation of make code inside Grok um, that we've got some courses that are in the development currently, Andrew. Um, there is an iPhone app and um, it's also available through the web interface on any 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 operating system. So it's nice and flexible. Um, yep. and we'll have, so button A makes a noise. Um, it was almost was my favorite bit of learning to code was when you work out how to make the microprocessor make some sort of noise. And you can also shake it and get it to do something in response. So I'll use someone else's artistic skills, um, monster face, I'll wait for it to load. Press the, uh, it'll run through that welcome message all the time. So I'll call you all sufficiently welcomed. Um, press the shake button or actually shake the mic a bit, which sometimes works, yes. And it comes up with the little monster face. Yeah. So moving so, quickly along to a project, unless there's anything else. No, so um, just back on Andrew's point, I think you might ask why you would use MakeCode or why you would use Grok. Um, MakeCode is great to just do a project, but using the platform gives you a more, more structured course to follow through some specific text and learn an outcome or learn um, the concepts as opposed to just making something as you go. Um, so there's no course around this. So um, that's that's basically the difference. But um, next year we'll have lots of, um, exactly. Um, uh, rocks, rock, scissors, paper game. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, that's, that's an awesome activity, Jason. Yeah, that's a great, great suggestion. And we'll do something quite similar now, actually. Not quite rock, paper, scissors, but you can imagine how, how that might work. Because, um, you know, scissors, paper, rock, then you'd shake it and then it would show up your particular one. Um, um, so there's, there's some basics that we'll go through. And if you go to the next slide, Penny. Um, We'll yep. be using so, the ra yeah the radio um in order to have the microbit communicate and um just like Jason's uh example in the chat uh, this is by far the best feature of the microbit is the fact that it does have a radio which means that it's very seamless for students to be able to communicate wirelessly um in a classroom and you can have using make code, you can have, you can have an essentially infinite number of networks in a room um, at once. Um, and so what will, and um, the mic, the make code has a pretty good emulator of how that works. So let's, how about you describe what you're doing, Penny? Yeah. So I'm just opening up the radio tab and seeing what there is available. Um, generally you only use a few of these a lot of the time. So we're just going to start with uh, send string and receive string and radio set group. So a group is exactly the same thing as a radio channel. So if you get out, you know, old walkie talkie and you say, oh, I'm on channel 32, then everyone has to set to the same channel before you can communicate. I think it's one of the great computing concepts that's easier the older you are. So everyone needs to set to the same channel and then you can start working together. So I'm going to use the on button A press to control when things happen. So when you press button A, just like you're pressing the button on a walkie-talkie, you're going to send string and because I'm 
an egomaniac. It can be my name. And then when you receive that name, I'm going to do the smiley face, sort of. That was almost a smiley face. That'll do. Um, um, so, so Kath asked a question on Thursday. Will students be able to interact with us um, making this? Um, in, a, in a sense, I think we'll, we'll give students uh, uh, some skills and hopefully some really cool outcomes and some interactive project. And then they'll hopefully be uh, and that, well, they'll interact with us as as we do it, but then they'll afterwards. I think they'll be able to actually do this project themselves um, or something quite similar. Um, and we'll just show them like quite um, interesting applications of digital technologies. That, if that's going to answer your question, Kath. Yeah. Um, all right. So sending the strings, press button A, and then it brings up. This is what's nice about um, so these, make code in general is. Whenever you use the radio and have a sender and a receiver, it makes two versions. So you can send on one and it'll automatically receive on the other and same the other way around. Uh, so you can see that smiley face is on the screen forever. I forgot to clear the screen. That should solve that. And clear. And clear. Uh, so that lets us communicate if you're doing like a rock, paper, scissors game. Um, you could automatically communicate with each other, use some logic and see who wins automatically afterwards or use a bunch of different button presses to have different responses. Um, so I think Kath will probably just give them a link that they can uh, open up make code themselves. Um, although sometimes it can be a little bit clunky with, when you get kids to do a bit of programming. So sometimes it's uh, more engaging for them to just see a demo, um, even though they're not being directly engaged, they're not also um, troubleshooting on their own <laughs> and asking a thousand questions. And so depending on the number of people that come, I think um, will determine um, how we go with that. Um, but they won't need to log into any accounts and stuff. It's just it, that, that that is one of the problems when you have 50 kids or something attending. Um, and so a uh, question for everyone. Um, so what, what are you building now, Penny? Sorry. All right. So now what I'm trying to do is have a way where if button A is pressed and it sends Penny, we get a heart. And if button B is pressed, sending Owen, we get a smiley face. So I'm trying to work out how to do the logic in here to make that happen. And so does anyone have any ideas? I know you're all programming whizzes. And so I think you probably do. If received is penny, yeah. And so we can type received as penny, but the thing about MakeCode, and if you are using this platform in your classes, this is the one thing that will probably confuse them. You can type received as penny, but that just compares the word received to the word penny, not what's stored in the received variable. And so how you get that is by dragging it out of the top and then plopping it in in there. And we'll do the same thing for the other one. You've used make, um, make code, yeah. In the past, it used to be a bit trickier to get it in. They've had an update where you get this nice little yellow line that tells you where it's going to go. OK. So All right. So so if we press button B, what's gonna what's gonna show up on the screen? Any ideas? Smiley face, great. So press button B, Penny. Press it again, probably. There you go. Um, it disappears quite quickly. And so 
We can either show it forever by removing the clear screen block, or we can add a pause to pause for a certain amount of time. All right, um, and that's just the pause block, which goes for half a second in this particular case. Okay, so how about Penny? We jump back to the slides, and we'll um, we'll yeah, absolutely. We'll talk about what project we're going to build. Um, we're going to make the ultimate ice cream showdown. And so this is essentially a way to do voting with the micro bit. And we'll have uh, lots of micro bits that will vote. And then one micro bit that will receive all the votes and tally up um, who, who wins. Um, so if, um, and so basically we're going to follow a very simple algorithm to determine who the winner is. Um, and um, we'll determine what, 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 which one is the best ice cream, but using, using micro bits to do that. Um, so if you go to the next slide, Penny, um, similar to how a, uh, like a, the footy finals might look like in a sort of a knockout tournament, uh, which is, this is essentially the same thing, only this is a bit more important. Um, but, uh, if you have two, two things against each other, we can um, vote for one or the other by pressing A or B in each round, and then we'll, whoever's the winner will progress to the next round until we find the ultimate ice cream champion. Which I have a feeling we know who that who that is um, already. Um, so if we were going to do the first round, which is going to be chocolate versus vanilla, type in the chat which one you think is going to win. A I can update the screen. <laughs> you can type in uh, A or B, choc chocolate. All right, A. So, all right. So, it looks like we have uh, Andrew and Jason are uh, chocolate, um, chocolate fans. So, that was pretty. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, definitive. And so what about um, strawberry or banana? Um, you can type, you can, uh, strawberry, says Andrew. What about you, Jason? Ooh, banana. And Kat's gone a bit silent, so we're not sure who's going to be our deciding vote. Um, this one's a bit, a bit more contentious. Um, but this is an algorithm that determines a winner and you can see it sort of have a decision, um, with that branch, which means who wins is it going to, is one going to proceed or is the other going to proceed? Um, and that's a kind of different algorithm to the one that will become the micro bit program that will receive the votes from people. But that's essentially what we're going to create. Um, so let's go to the next slide, Penny. You can probably. Oh, uh, so let's do a deciding vote, Owen. All right. All right. Oh, I guess I'm gonna vote for strawberry. All right. <laughs> and we can do the second round just to finish the knockout tournament. Oh, this this one's this one's obvious. <laughs> um. Andrew, yes. Oh, strawberry. No, chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Go on the controversial one. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you guys are being intentionally controversial. All right. <laughs> um, All right. Excellent. Strawberry's the winner. Okay. Um, so jump to the next slide, Penny. Um, continue. Continue to the next slide. Um, this is what our voting system would look like. So if you imagine on the left, we have our receiver, which is going to tally all the votes. And then all of our sender micro bits, which could be everyone who is voting, would either press A or press B to cast their vote to determine who is the winner. So um, the same program is, in, is on all the micro bits on the right, but um, the receiver that tallies them all up is the one on the left. And so now we're going to uh, write the code for both of them. And Penny is going to load them onto her micro bit and give you a bit of a demo. All right. All right. That was a quick hint. So we can use the code <laughs> that 
<laughs> we've already made uh, if we like. So we can build it up together if you want to use the chat. So we're just floating between A and B using send string and receive string. Let's be a little bit descriptive. It's kind of like not calling your file names final, final. Um, so pick a string that you should be sent when button A is pressed and pick a string that should be sent when button B is pressed. And we'll decide that once. Let's put it. And then once we've received our strings, we're going to not show icons this time. We're going to need an upgrade a variable to reflect that. So A equals A. Yeah, that sounds that sounds pretty good. And we'll go with B equals B as well. So if received strings equal A, we'll do something. If it equals B, we can do something. It's good practice to kind of test your code as you go. So we can test that we know that you know, button A is still showing the heart, button B is still showing the smiley. It's probably a bit easier to debug if we actually put in something that makes sense. So we can go show string. Uh, there's a little way of making this quicker. If you left click, you can duplicate any given block. Button B goes there. So we can kind of say, oh, right, we've sent A. We've sent B. All right, so we need a way to count how many times we've received A and B. So to do that, we make a variable and we want to call this something to do with how many times we have received someone pressing the A button. Except that's really long to type and A score, love it. And similarly, we'll go with. score. All right, so with those two variables, every time we receive an A, we want to update how many A scores there are. So I've got all meaningful names. Counter, I used to counter last time. I think it was A count and B count. Score's good as well. So every time we receive A, we're going to change the A score just by one. And then same thing, I'm going to duplicate this block underneath change the B score by one. So there's a problem with this code already that make codes not telling us about. So when you first start this program, what do you reckon the value of A score will be? Which is an incredibly weird question. Zero, I'd hope it'd be zero, but not necessarily because we haven't exactly, we haven't told it to be zero. So it could just be a random number, could be not a number, could be nothing, could break everything, could just do something weird. So on start, we want to set it to zero. So that means every time we reset the micro bit, we'll start from zero. So set A score to zero, set B score to zero. Cool. So now what we want to do is we want to display what the A score is and what the B score is forever. Scratch brain. I was doing some scratch recently. It's good fun. It's like just all the easy bits of programming with a little bit of art. It's actually, yeah, enjoyed it more than I thought it would. Zero pressure. Um, all right, so we're going to find a way to display the A score and then the B score. So we could just display the A number, then the B number back and forwards, but I won't remember. No one will know what order it's in. It'll be quite hard to tell. So we're just going to go a simple way of show string A and then display the A score. So we've got A score here, which is where we can use the variable. And we use the show number block. This is one of those times where type matter, if we try and do show Oh, you know what? That actually will work. But I'm not sure what it'll look like. It's probably just can't do it the other way around. Often in other programming languages, that won't work. Show string B. And then show the number B score. So we can try that. We'll go A0, 
big zero going across. Um, and I'll just flick it back and forth. That's not the easiest thing to read. You could imagine a neater way of displaying it if we kind of made a graph or something, but we're not going to bother with, it, with any of that. Cool. So that's the uh, receiver on the transmitter end. It's a bit confusing because it's all in the same file, but you can press button A and it should increase the score of each one, which didn't happen that time. How was that? Let's reset the code. Just by kind of making that disappear on start. String A, receive to string A, forever display. All right, so on this bottom one, you can see it's now displaying A1, B0. If I press A again, it shows A briefly as it receives it, and now we're up to A2. So if I spam the A button, Still at A2 because it takes a while to receive each one. So it's every time it receives A, it's going through the A. Now it's finally caught up and we're going A6. So I'm going to get rid of the show string thing. That was good for debugging, but not very good for the overall program. Back, back in, it will start from scratch. And we can go again. A2, and now we're up to B1, and can continue on. This is the sort of thing that's just much better if we do it in person. So let's stop screen sharing and get a real version of that. So can you see my screen on large, or do we have to change something here, Owen? Um... I've locked it so everyone should be able to see you. Okay, cool. So if this is the receive micro bit, uh, it's showing A, B, is that backwards? Of course. No, no, it's just on your computer, it's backwards. Excellent. That's even better. So that this is one of my sender micro bits. I can spam that a few times. Now it's up to A3. And it says B3 currently. B3. B4, by pressing the A button a few times. And we can see it, it updating. So if you do it in the classroom, you can have one of the counter micro bit up the front. You can have student micro bits around, and they should communicate within about 30 meters or so, maybe further. And then this is a summary of the code. Uh, so go back to the slide, Penny. Yep. Are uh, the slides or the? Uh, we'll go to the slides now. Yep. Cool. All right, so we can go through the... Your slides aren't currently the... showing, Penny. Can you share? What's it showing for you? Just your, your face. Oh, of course. Ex <laughs> Technology. Um, yes, Andrew, that is done through the radio. And so, well, the radio is an example of a network, but it uh, uses the Bluetooth antenna on the physical device to just send wireless messages in a room. And so that's how easy it is to send messages across a room quite, quite simply. Um, so that's the project. We've gotten our voting system and then we've written the code to develop that um, using the micro bits. And so there's quite a lot of things that this connects to when, with regard to the curriculum. Do you mind sh uh, sharing full screen, Penny? Um, uh, yep. Yeah. So on all of our courses, We've gotten <clears throat> some, uh, we've, we've done quite a, I guess, fine grained linking, which most resources that you'll see will link to a uh, ACARA um, content description. Um, but we, we've, the content descriptions, particularly in digital technologies, have a whole bunch of different elements that make up what it is that um, the outcomes that students actually need to learn. 
And some of those are not particularly well described in the content description. So on our website, we've broken each one down into smaller uh, subsections. So you, hopefully teachers can see um, exactly what you need to teach in plain English through the whole digital technologies um, subject. So we'll go ahead and go to the next slide, Penny. Um, so for digital systems, um, at the top, you'll see the Akara content description. Um, and for each of each content description, there's a bunch of elements and you'll see, hopefully there's some plain English text that describes what students actually need to do by the end of that particular band level. And we've done this for every uh, content description in, in the, for the digital technologies curriculum and that all, all that's uh, on, our, on our website. And so what we're gonna do is take that project and break them up into all of the elements and show you where exactly everything fits um, with the curriculum that we just, just did. Or if you did this in um, class, and that's from our website, aca.edu.au, and the unpack uh, the curriculum section is where you can find it. Um, if you go to the next slide, Penny. Um, so this is a breakdown on the left. We can see the um, key concepts. And so the digital technologies curriculum is made up of 10 key concepts. And underneath that, that's the uh, content descriptions that come from the Australian curriculum. And the Vic Victorian curriculum is exactly the same text. They just rearranged it on the page a bit more in how they how they present it. But the, the text is almost exactly the same in almost uh, all cases. And on the right has the elements that's broken up that make up all of that content description. So by doing all of those things on the right, um, you will have covered all of the things that are inside the content description. And so um, for the year three, four band, um, if we did this activity with year three, four students, and that was, um, Oh, yeah. You have to turn off the annotation, Penny. I will. Um, so go back. So we look at peripherals and components. And so we're looking at a physical device, uh, the micro bit. And by pointing out that the micro bit has some components like a temperature sensor, the radio, some buttons, um, uh, that's all that's really required in order to identify what, um, what the components are that make up a system. Go next, Penny. Um, we look at different representations. For example, I'm not sure how much this picture looks like a frog, but um, in data representation, looking at how something represents something else in the year three, four band is a key idea. So the smiley face is just a bunch of LEDs on uh, a screen, but those represent a real smiley face. And so they're just some dots, but that, uh, that thing represents something else. And that's the key idea that's introduced in um in primary school but it just builds in sophistication through the through the year levels um so we've collected data so from the students uh, submitting their votes that's a way of collecting information from them um and um, we can visualize data by drawing a graph or just determining some way of visualization of how uh, who, who the winner was. And we had an algorithm that um, determined who the winner was. And so it's very different from the, the algorithm that is the program that does the voting system. Um, but at the year three, four band, just being able to follow the steps and understand the basic ideas, um, uh, like sequence of steps and branching, which are the next two, um, oh, I think they skipped them over, but they're, they're included as well. Um, uh, I think they'll come back later. <laughs> yeah. And then also by writing the code, we implemented the digital solution. We probably would have had to test it when we were writing the code. We have user input, which is a way of interacting with the program after it's been written by pressing the buttons. We had our if statements to determine who the vote was for, and that's branching. And we did it all in block-based visual programming. So you can see all of those uh, parts of the curriculum that this task um, covers. And so even though it's quite a small, simple task, you're, you're 
ticking a lot of things off um, just by doing a task like this um, with your students. And that's just implicitly within the task. If you wanted to do some more activities to expand the connection a bit further, continue on Penny. Um, so the ones highlighted here are the ones that um, we linked to already. Um, so they're the things that this task already covers. Um, but by asking students, um, uh, looking at the specification of the problem, what problem is being solved? We're just choosing what the best ice cream is, um, which is a very, very uh, serious problem. Um, and you can define the problem and what does it mean to, to have the best ice cream or the, our, our most favorite ice cream. And the important thing about problems in the curriculum is they'll build in sophistication over time, but it's what's relevant to the students at their year level um, are the types of things. And so simple problems are, can be very, very simple problems. Um, or the mental year level in the case of ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, looking at visualized data, you could find a way to collate the data and put some kind of graph or some kind of plot to, to see how all the votes came up. So we could, we could visualize the data that we've collected um, maybe by drawing a simple bar chart. Um, what's next, Benny? And if we wanted to just see what other different types of ice cream, ice cream are out there and build a master, master voting system for more, we can uh, access other data from other places and see what other information is out there relevant to the topic that we're investigating. Um, and, um, Representing algorithms means students actually draw the flowchart. And in year three, four, they still can draw a simple flowchart uh, like this. But in year five, six, we'd expect them to do um, the flowchart for the code, which would be the our voting system code, not, not just the how we determine who the winner is. Um, but the con conceptual ideas, um, which is a sequence of steps and branching, are, are all the same. And so there's lots and lots of connections that you can do a few little activities with a quite a simple task. Um, and I think we forgot one, Penny, I think transmit data at the top is probably also covered um, as well because we're transmitting information from one place uh, to another. So there's lots um, of components in this curriculum that this fairly simple task um, covers. All right, we're gonna continue on. We'll skip past the five, six, one, um, but we'll we'll send you a, a link um, to, to this slide deck if you wanna step through our whole uh, animation. But we did, but we are gonna, because Andrew's here, we are gonna cover some secondary stuff as well. Um, so, um, so there's, there's other links that you can do to the, um, maths and science curriculum as well, if you were looking at data or doing any more analysis or how, and so just by doing a simple task, there's there's lots of little things that it, that it links to. And that's really the thing that we really wanted to um, emphasize here. Um, so before we continue to this, oh, we'll, we'll have time for questions at the end actually. So we might just open up the cryptography um, course. Um, and so this is gonna be moving to secondary now, but this is a good example of how, uh, what a course when they learn some fundamental skills by doing a project, this is how it's a bit more of a structured course to learn in a bit more detail of, uh, about a whole topic uh, or a whole um, thing. And this, in this case, it's cryptography. And this particular uh, course has, um, uh, is funded by the big four banks and is free for every student, uh, every secondary student in Australia, um, these courses are free for. And so have all of you used the Grok um, learning interface before? Um, yes, uh, would primary students have access to these even though it's aimed at high school? Uh, this particular course, I don't believe so, no, Jason, um, but we're actually currently writing a uh, information security sort of like, um, uh, be safe around social networks course that is going to be for primary school students. And that'll be released probably next term, I think. Um, um, so this one covers the programming, text-based programming as also the cybersecurity cryptography aspect. Um, and you'll note if on the very first slide of all our courses, we just added this. Um, if you click the teacher's notes, because you're all teachers, 
you'll see it has that same type of fine-grained curriculum linking to all of our uh, so you can see every element that this course ticks off and importantly what it doesn't cover um, so the ones that are like italicized uh, it it doesn't cover so um, but all of the things that it does are bold so this course does cover quite a bit um, and, and you so, can click on it and have a look at a more in-depth explanation of what's going on. So it, yeah. tells you it covers the cryptography part, which is these two bits of the digital systems. Yeah, um, you're jumping cryptography. around a little bit, Penny, but scroll down a bit while you're there. Um, if you hover over one of the things, you can, you'll see the, the text in the content description highlights, and that's the text that's relevant to what this part is so it just shows you what part what what that bit means and what you actually need to do and we've got that for all of the um the content descriptions in the curriculum um okay so we might just do the second question penny um i'm not sure what the first one is so this one's probably quite easy um please let us know if you have not i think uh, Kath probably has not used the Grok learning interface before, um, but Jason and Andrew have. But for Kath, we'll give uh, her a, a slight demo. Um, so if you want to solve this particular question, Penny, um, this is a secondary course, so I don't think um, uh, your primary school students will uh, need, be needing to type. Um, it's, it's, it's Python. It's Python. It's not, um, it's not microbit. Um, so it's just oh, print. Okay. It's just print. Yeah. I swear Penny does have a mechatronics and mechatronic oh, engineering no. degree. <laughs> <laughs> so if you zoom in a little bit, Penny, um, after Penny's written the answer to this question, she has the ability to, at the top right, to mark this question. We'll run it first. Yeah. It is just. You can run it and then it'll print the answer and then we can mark and then submit it. And then uh, importantly, it'll run through um, all the tests and see if she gets everything right. And so if there's a, if you want to make a mistake, Penny, by removing a space or something like that and then marking it, you'll see it'll run through a whole bunch of test cases and I'll tell you all the things that you got correct. The words, the punctuation, the capitalization are all correct. It did not print spaces where it should have. And so the this is why this course is quite good for just uh, teaching remotely, is you can enroll your students and they can, uh, the auto marker will help them get to the correct answer. A warning, it will have to be exactly the correct answer. Um, so if something's not quite correct, it will it will tell you. Um, but also, Penny, if you want to close that, maybe remove, I'm not sure if we've got it in this question, um, um, remove one of the brackets and try and run the course. So remove a bracket from print, I think. I'm not sure if we added it to this one. Yes. Oh, nice. So in some of the earlier questions, it's not in all of them because it takes a lot of work, um, if there's a missing bracket and the student tries to run it, it will try and give us a helpful hint. Are you missing the round bracket at the end of the print call? Um, and so uh, inside the platform, we give students a lot of fine grained help. So hopefully it can, if, if there's errors, we try and unpack them to make them a bit, explain what they mean in a bit more plain, uh, plain English. Um, um, and so what this course does is introduce um, cryptography and uh, students have to uh, crack um, different mess uh, different cryptographic me messages. And we look at different types of um, uh, ways to encode messages in text and in images and how we can find the hidden message within it. So how about we skip to another question, Penny? Um, we'll go a bit further down. Um, let's, let's try, um, finding the coordinates finding down the bottom, the... right down the bottom. Cool. So this question is, um, to do with, um, 
digital um, data representation. Um, and the key part of data representation in secondary is that there's, um, and so how data is represented in text, images, and audio. And image representation is just numbers that are built together with different colors and different um, bits per um, sample in order to present an image. So if we tick away most of the large numbers, Penny, um, I think keep red, but I... Uh, um, Go the other way around. Uh, yeah. I think you'll, yeah. So I think you'll need to leave one and get rid of the, um, get rid of the 64 and just keep the one down the bottom. I think it's, I think it's there. And then remove green and blue. And then remove the 32 and the 16, I think. Um, Four and the two. Yes, you'll see that there is coordinates hidden in the image, even though, and they, I trust you, they are encoded in the image. We did that ourselves. Um, but you can only see the image um, by looking at a particular type of representation of that, of that image. And so um, uh, this is called steganography, uh, which is hiding hidden messages inside um, inside otherwise innocuous messages. And so here, it might be the drop-off location for something. I think the actual coordinates might be Uluru, um, but um, uh, that, that's an example of steganography. So we can hide messages in, uh, the, in the, in, inside something, but also as we move on, we'll, get, we'll write code to crack other types of different messages. Um, uh, Pillow and Google Classroom. It classroom knocks off the bottom two digits in each RGB. Oh, really? I did not know that. Um, Andrew, there is a image representation course on Grok as well. If you want to do it with um, with Pill, um, and so that there there, there is a course um, that does that. Um, so I think we're almost out of time, but I do want to show you, uh, you in particular, Kath, the uh, teacher dashboard. Um, just so you can see what type of information that you um, uh, see. And while uh, Penny's uh, going to the teacher dashboard, I just wanted to see if anyone had any questions of anything that we've covered so far. Um, did that, uh, Jason, did you find that project and sort of linking of what the project was to the curriculum useful? I did notice in your feedback that you did, did say more curriculum linking would be good. So I tried to include that. Um, I am not in the teacher dashboard. Ah. Oh, Do you yeah. want to swap over? Uh, you, uh, you, don't have, uh, you don't have the privileges, Penny. No, I'm not. I'm not you're actually a second, second class citizen. <laughs> um, all right. Um, I'll need to make myself, well, I'll just uh, answer any questions. I, th I think we can just go back to the slides. Um, so did anyone have anything, just while we've got the uh, last five minutes of anything you wanted to know about digital technologies or did you want me to show you more cryptography stuff? Cause I did rush through that a little bit, Andrew or anything else you'd like to see Jason? All right, um, uh, some grade five and six stuff, maybe. Um, uh, I've been looking at your stuff and grew up for a while. Great, well, good to good to hear, Andrew. Um, if anything, yeah, um, if you do have any questions, you can definitely send us an email at help at aca.edu.au and that's uh, that's where you can, we can answer any questions about the curriculum or life in general. Um, Grade five and six stuff. I'm not sure specifically what you mean. We can go through that linking that we had in the slides. Um, actually, I think that might be useful for you, Jason. Um, if you want to just display that particular one, Penny, because there's some differences with um, the three, four to five, six um, linking. So if you want to present this one, Penny. Yep. Uh, 
Um, so that particular activity looked at peripherals and components, which is this is the voting system activity um, and transmitting data just like before. I'd like to know where to go from three, four onwards. Um, did we end up releasing those like little, here's your path to learning through through the year levels infographic things, Penny? We were making them. I don't think so. I think they're somewhere. Okay. Um, I'm going to search them. Um, senior, uh, so to go from three and four, Andrew, uh, or Jason, I've got your email address. I'll send you those draft things with, uh, in an email after the, after the webinar. Um, I'll, they've got a, but there's a bunch of suggestions of which, uh, courses, which are, which would be, which would be useful. Um, I'll, I'll make sure I do that. Um, Andrew asks any more senior stuff in the pipeline? Um, let's sort of look at what we have. Um, so the advanced challenge is the main thing that's the sort of the upper senior level. Um, so why have you, I mean, that would be very good. Um, I, I don't think there's that much in the pipeline for senior stuff, um, at the moment, Andrew, unfortunately, um, Yeah, cool. Uh, so, so the the hardest course that we've written, I think the network security one is probably the most appropriate for um, that's free for um, for senior years, and so they'll they'll end up it's it's using the micro bit as well, but they'll um, uh, uh, basically build up their own network and hop packets along between different micro bits, um, and so. Uh, Penny and I wrote, wrote most of this course. So if you have any questions about that, but this is the one I'd recommend for the senior levels that's free. Um, the ones that are not free, um, that are paid for by Grok subscriptions would be the advanced challenge, uh, the NCSS challenge and um, infra, uh, intro to programming two, which goes into more data structures and stuff, but n none of it's, and so they're, they're the ones that we've got that are more secondary focused, I think, or upper secondary. Um, okay. Um, for the year four, three, four question, um, yeah. we've got these new scratch courses that have come out pretty recently. Uh, they don't map to the higher curriculum levels, but they're very popular with, uh, a lot of teachers who haven't had a chance yeah. to talk, teach the year three, four stuff yet. Yeah. And so Kath, if you're looking for a place to start, these scratch ones is probably what we would recommend or the, the Blockly Wombot course on the right there. Um, and so how you get to this um, page is on our website uh, on the resources page. You can see there's a filter on the left, so you can filter via year level of what year level is appropriate. And um, if you want year three, four level age appropriate stuff, then you can uh, tick there or five, six. Um, these are things that are written specifically for that. Um, um, for that year level, um, if I, I th I'd say it's what you find interesting is probably the actual answer, Jason. I quite like the biology course, um, cause it covers algorithms as well and links to science, the, the year five and six, uh, science curriculum. If you've got micro bits uh, doing the micro bit sport and try and get, uh, using the radio for some physical sport activities might be, might be good. If you want to draw pictures. Um, the turtle course is probably one of our most popular ones. And so those are the three that I'd probably suggest Jason to answer your earlier question. Um, and, um, so we're doing, I think this is the last of our department webinars, um, or we'll see what happens, uh, in the future. Um, we are, we do do webinars on every Monday though, as well, that are not specifically for, um, Victorians, but for um, through the department, but, uh, just for everyone. So if you click on the webinar, see webinar tab, any, um, these are the ones that we have coming up, um, integrating digital technologies with other learning areas is on next week, um, our primary and secondary versions, and then, and they'll be running in parallel. Um, I'll be talking about the impact, uh, digital technologies, key concepts. Um, which talks about sort of broader use of um, the impact of technology through to broader society, which is also in the curriculum. And I think Kenny is doing in interactions, which looks at user interfaces and 
um, user experience and uh, designing interfaces and how we interact with technology. And that's another key concept that we're doing. And all of our previous webinars, uh, including this one will be and our other, um, other webinars that we've done previously are on our YouTube channel. Um, so if you look at uh, Australian Computing Academy YouTube, then you'll be able to find, find all of those. Oh, all the right. resources. Yeah, so there's oh, lots of resources. I think the problem is not, not enough resources. It's probably too many resources. Um, but, but yes, all of our old web webinars are in the teacher resources section here as well. Um, yes, so there's lots of stuff. It's all free. Please, please use it. Um, Great. Thanks. Thanks so much for coming, Andrew, Kath, and Jason. Um, I'll make sure I send you that email this afternoon, Jason. As soon as I find the picture of it, I'll just take a screenshot and send send it out. Um, and, it, and if you do have any questions that you would like to ask, just email us at um, help at aca.edu.au, and that will go to the entire team. Um, or you can email Owen at ACA or Penny at ACA, and then. Uh, you can uh, ask us any any questions, or if you send Penny a mechatronic engineering question, um, Andrew, she'll be very happy. <laughs> and any electronic specific questions, you can go to Owen. <laughs>